Hello and welcome to Oil Painting, <clears throat> Learning from the Masters. This is the eighth episode. Uh, my name's Jason Meyer and I'm joined tonight with my wife, Cindy, behind the scenes, taking care of everything. <laughs> so last week we talked about <clears throat> making visual power diminish into the distance or seem to fade away using linear and atmospheric perspective. This week, we're going to talk about how we handle more than one color or one thing disappearing back into space, receding back into space. Okay, so we're going to start with the old masters, see some of them, and then um, I am going to do a little procreate with them after a short uh, show, and then we'll be back and get on with the demo. The master understands that how you get to and from a note plays an extremely important part in the painting. Do things emerge from and submerge back into the painting? Whether it's a group of people emerging and then submerging back into the darkness, or crowds that are emerging and submerging. There could be huge mountains. Or maybe moonlight and firelight. Where a note comes from and where a note goes is an important part of the master's composition. Let's have a closer look at the Rembrandt and the idea of notes emerging, peaking, and then submerging back, only to emerge and submerge again. Okay, so I'm gonna add, we're gonna look at this painting in a very particular way. And in particular, I wanna focus on two notes, right? But two larger notes containing um, notes within them. But the first is our major note in this painting. And we're gonna call this the first note, major note. Now within this note, there's rise and a fall, isn't there? But as a whole, this, this is held together. And this is the second or minor note I want us to focus on, or to see, just to appreciate. And again, within the second nose, there's rise and fall, but there's rise, there's peak, and there's fall. Just like in the first note, but notice that the scale is different. The visual power is different. In controlling the visual power this way, and letting it emerge, peak, submerge, re-emerge, peak, and submerge at a different level, we can truly start to orchestrate the canvas. Now, how can I call those two notes? Well, they're only notes because they're separated or held by the nothingness, or in this case, the darkness. Right? Do you see how without 
that dark, those notes would just spill over. So the dark is our stop. It's our hold. And here we can see where it emerges from, submerges back into, to reemerge before it submerges back in, back quietly before the end of the canvas. Right? So when we come back to our full color, inspect these areas and see if he hasn't left that open just enough that we can sneak through there. So nothing's completely closed off. Once again, emerging from the left-hand side into our major note, and then it's gonna submerge before it re-emerges to the minor note in the background before that submerges back into the background. Have you ever considered laying paint down like that? Have you ever considered how to make your paint note emerge, submerge, right? It brings a new quality, a new voice, new mood, completely new possibilities. To the painting. Okay, what do you guys think? Are you ready to ask a little bit more from each of your paint notes and get a little more out of it? Um, well, so far you're doing good. So this week for this episode, I did run out of daylight just a little bit. So I was unable to go through and put um, student work to music and stuff. But I did want to put a few of the exercises up here on the screen and just talk about them a little bit. And I think it's good for you guys to see um, what some of the other people are doing. Let's see. Well, I'm sorry I'm behind you, but I'm behind you. So there we go. But I love it. We start with the strongest and then we march back. Do you have any paintings that you've done in the past? Maybe landscapes or groups of people or whatever that you could go back and apply this to? Right? I think that's a good way to test these things is to see if on some of your old stuff that didn't quite turn out or you weren't quite happy with, maybe reconceive it and even on a different canvas, see if you can't introduce some of these things to make it visually interesting. So very good. Love seeing this. Love seeing this. Again, look how clear the vagueness is. Is that a strange statement? How clear the vagueness is? Because truth is, is you need clarity and vagueness, but you have to control the vagueness. You have to be, dare I say, specific with the vagueness. And look, obviously this is giving you guys the power to do that. Fantastic, fantastic. Whoops, not gonna let me go low enough on this one to blow it up too big. But again, look at that happen. Okay, and so this week we're gonna learn how to do more than one color, right? And so then you can start really imagining um, what you could do with some of these things.
Okay. So I think I got out of order here. So we're going to do a demo, but it's fun seeing you guys think. So if we could imagine those things, and then what if you had the ground coming at you? Right, so you, you appear to have great distance. And then you have trees up front, and then back, and back, right? And then you can really start to create some environments. So in the demo today, we're gonna see how to do that. So let's jump up to that. Last week, we saw how to create the illusion of distance with visual power using linear, and atmospheric perspective. This week, we'll see how to handle more than one thing, more than one color, going back into space. Suppose in addition to our boxes going back into the distance, we also show the ground receding away from us. We start by placing a horizon line then we divide the space between the bottom of the canvas and the horizon line with the largest space on the bottom and then progressively make each space diminish in size moving toward the horizon line. Next, we begin working on the upright boxes. There'll be boxes now. Eventually, we'll turn them into trees. A large one up front, and then diminishing in height as we recede into space. So from tallest to shortest, diminishing size, we have our linear perspective. Then with our darkest riches up front, we will then lighten and gray each box as it goes back into space. Next, we turn our attention to the ground. Again, the ground will be lighter than the uprights, but it too, the first box will be darker and richer than the second box, which will be lighter and grayer. The third box lighter and grayer still, and the fourth box lighter and grayer still. You can interpret grayer as closer to the middle. Like always, we'll start with our crew, highlight, light, middle, and dark. And we're gonna need these for trees that are gonna be darker. And we're gonna need it for the ground that will be lighter. So that's going to be separate light and dark for your trees and your ground, but our middle is going to be the same. And that's the key here is your different elements will disappear into the same middle. Okay? So again, that's the secret is your Different elements, in this case the trees and the ground, or your different colors, if you'll have them disappear into the same middle, it'll be harmonious. So what I've done here is the darker trees I'm mixing up with black and yellow ochre. Then the ground I'm going to mix up with black and cad yellow. And I can use a little bit of the red to modify it to gray it down if it gets um, too green. Then for the ground, the dark ground, we're, in, um, we're going to use black and cad yellow instead of the yellow ochre. The middle, I'm going to make a little purple which is black, white, and cad red. If we need to gray off our middle purple, 
uh, yellow is the complement of the purple. So we can use the yellow to gray it off just a bit. Our trees in light will be yellow ochre and black with white. For the ground in light, that will be cadmium yellow and black plus white. So for the outdoor, for the landscape, our middle needs to change, seemingly change just a little bit here. Instead of being in the middle of the light and our dark, it needs to be lighter than both the light and our dark. Once we have everything all mixed up, last thing to do is to harmonize and we'll be ready to go. Okay, now that we know the ideas behind what we're doing and we have our paint mixed, we'll start with our dark. <laughs> I'm just going to set up a space here where I, I'm going to be working. So this essentially will be my canvas between these marks. The horizon line is the first thing we put in. And again, you don't want the viewer to see this, but it's important to know where it is. So then that you could subdivide the space it's going to be happening in. So you go half or a little over half. Each time, you'll be guaranteed to go from bigger to smaller. Once again, we'll go larger than halfway to make our second space. So this will definitely be larger, sh smaller than the first space we created. And then as we divide that again, we go from big to smaller to smaller to smallest before we get to the horizon line. Now it's time to indicate our upright boxes. We're going to make our tallest one go the lowest on the canvas. So that means it's the closest to us and it's going to go up above out of the canvas. So that will all be a vertical box there or eventually a stand of trees. But this is a great way to place your landscape without getting too involved with contours. So the next one back will start higher up on the canvas and then it won't go quite to the top. So it's shorter in height. It can be longer in width, broader, but it's gonna be smaller in height. And for the third one, it'll be closer to the horizon line and it'll be even smaller in height. So that's our linear perspective for our boxes. Now, starting with our darks, we're gonna lay in our first trees. Okay, and for right now, we just want this more or less flat. Again, sometimes when I'm videoing this, it just out of necessity, I have to paint faster. So if you take a little time, you can probably do a better job than I did on these. So how do we move that back into space now? Well, if you remember from last week, we add a little middle for the next stand of trees. Right, and so it'll be smaller in size, linear perspective, and then it's going to be less visually powerful or closer to the middle. And we can do that by just adding a little middle to the first mix. And then again, we want this relatively flat, and because of time, right, I may not have done the best job possible, but. You can see what's happening here. And for the next upright box or distant trees, that's right, we'll add even more middle to our dark. And that will bring 
this even closer to our middle than the one in front. Okay, the size is smaller again, linear perspective, and then the visual power is not as strong. All right, then I'm gonna put the middle right there on the horizon line. So we have something to disappear into back there. We'll actually just put that, yeah, all above so that the distance reads. Because remember, it doesn't disappear into just anything, but it'll disappear into this middle. Okay, so for our dark on the ground, that's gonna be our cast shadow from our first tree, since our light will come in from the left and go to the light. So we'll use that dark for the cast shadow. And I'll make that longer, a little bit longer. So it shows you how tall those trees are. Now we'll go for the ground and light. And the first one that we have mixed up here will be our darkest, richest. And of course, it'll be lighter than the ground and shadow because this is the ground and light. And again, how do you do multiple objects or multiple colors? Is let them both disappear into the same middle. Use the same middle to weaken them. Okay, and then for the next section of ground, what do we do? We add a little bit of middle into the original ground color. And so this next section will be smaller than the first section and lighter, grayer, right? Less visually powerful. Okay, and we can continue the process. So with more of the middle, we add to the ground, and that'll push that back into space more, especially when we keep it smaller than what's in front of it. And then even more to get us back to the horizon line. So just to show you how easy it is to go from here to develop the uprights into trees, we'll go back to our original dark. And then really it's just a matter of changing the contour of giving it some tree-like shape to it, the edge, and then we'll come back and put some negative shapes into it. And this also helps carve and sculpt this thing into the tree. So depending on where we're at, right? So down at this level, we're in the shadow. Do you see that as we work across? So I can work some of that shadow right up in there and change that bottom shape. Then as I go up, that's the second ground in light. So we're going to match that second ground in light. It might be slightly darker. And then along that horizontal, we can continue with some negative shapes to turn this into trees. Okay, and if I was to go above that, you just want to use the background that's next to that level of space. So as we go back again, we added more gray to that. And then for this level, I'll use that for the negative shapes. And that way, when we look through the tree holes, we can, looks like we're still looking through distance. That background doesn't stand straight up. All right, I hope everybody's starting to see how from these exercises you can really gain some power in your paintings. Again, we take it week by week and a little bit at a time. And we'll expand this until you can just make beautiful, visually powerful paintings. Okay, does it, it seems like everybody so far is getting it from all the work I'm seeing and the questions that I've uh, received. So for this week's exercise, you're going to repeat what you just saw. Okay, so we'll finish up the program tonight. It'll be some similar video with different talk, but I'm going to talk you through it. 
And so when you guys uh, get ready to do it, you can come to the last thing and hit the first thing, press pause. What's the next thing I do? Press pause. If you don't quite have that concept clear in your head yet. All right. Hello, Miss Claudia. Good to see you and Katie and Susan. Glad everybody made it. We got Miss Karen D in Canada. So great, great, great to see everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So let's finish up tonight with the exercises. If you do have questions or anything, go ahead and type it in the thing and uh, I'll see if I, if it's a short thing, I'll address it after, after our last video here. All right. So again, watch this through and then see if you can repeat it. And then I want you to start looking at some of your work that maybe you're doing now or you've done in the past and see if you could reimagine it. You know, that idea of the ground, just the size. From most of the work I've seen, if you'll just apply that one principle to a lot of your landscapes, the quality, I believe, would greatly improve. And I think you would see it, too, after you did it. All right, so let's get busy with the exercise. For our exercise this week, we're going to show the horizontal ground and the vertical trees both as boxes diminishing into the distance. Let's walk through exactly how we're going to do that. Above the halfway, indicate the horizon line. A good place to start is more than half. Go up from the bottom more than a half to the horizon line for the first section of the ground. Then, in the section above, the one you just created, let's again go more than half, and so on. Now, our first upright, or vertical, rectangle will start at the top of the first section of ground, and will run out the top of the canvas. We will move up and over to the other side of to the other side for the next upright rectangle. We'll make this shorter in height than the first one. Finally, we will again move up and switch sides for the third upright. This will be shorter than the first two. That is the size and placement. Now, Let's talk about our diminishing tones for the upright trees and the horizontal ground. The key to this whole thing is that both tones must diminish to the same middle. And the middle, in this case, this is different than we've been doing up to this point. The middle, in this case, is a lighter value than our dark and light today. The tone movement for both greens will follow is slightly darker, richer, near, and it'll get slightly lighter and grayer as it recedes. We need different greens here. So for my trees, I'm gonna use yellow ochre and black, and I'll use cad red to adjust the intensity. For the ground, I'll use cadmium yellow and black with red to adjust the intensity. For the middle, I'm gonna use black, white, and red. I'll use a touch of cadmium yellow to further quote-unquote gray or neutralize the purple. The trees in light will again be yellow ochre and white. 
while the ground will be cadmium yellow and white. And of course, we'll add black to both of those to make them green. But the big division is the yellow ochre for the trees and then the cadmium yellow for the ground. Okay, as stated before, let's do a horizon line above halfway. Then again, let's go more than halfway for the first section of ground. A little more than halfway. Right? So that it's much smaller than the first one. Okay, and we'll do one last time and that'll create two more spaces or one, two, three, four steps back. For our upright rectangles, or our trees, let's start at our first uh, transition between the first and second ground. And then let's go up and out of the top of the canvas. Okay? And so that'll be the big block for our first tree. Then we want to go up to go back into space, and we're going to jump to the other side of the canvas. And then we want this one to be shorter in height. So it starts off further up the canvas and it ends below the top of the canvas. And finally, we'll do our third rectangle. Again, this one will be even sh shorter in height. For our trees, we'll use our dark of the trees, the yellow, ochre, black, and red. For our first upright. So we'll fill this one in. And then instead of going to the ground, what we'll do is we'll keep going on the uprights, but we'll go back in space now. And how do we weaken this to go back into space? We add some middle. We add a little middle to the dark. And that will make it visually less powerful in a setup with this middle. Okay, so we'll fill in that box. And again, I think you can do a better job than I did here trying to film and paint myself at the same time. A little bit difficult. And for the last one, we'll add even more middle to make it even visually weaker. Now this is only going to dis disappear if we set the middle up along with these tones. Now our dark ground will only be in one place, and that's going to be the cast shadow from these first trees. Right, so that most should go back in space a little bit, but we can make this just like a horizontal. And I'm going to make it go across most of the canvas. And that's going to imply that there's great height to those trees, right? You have to set up the big in order to get smaller. Then from here on out, I'm going to do the ground in light. And then I will walk that back again, weakening, weakening, making it less visual powerful, You adding the middle to it. Okay, so it the tone will get less by adding some middle, and then we've already set up where the sizes are less. So we'll have linear and atmospheric perspective. And what's the key to doing multiple colors? Is you have them disappear into the same middle. 
So for my second one, you see that's weaker than the first one. And even more, and then even more. Again, take your time and see, and then use your eyes with your paint to judge if it's working or not, and then try to adjust accordingly. Well, that ending caught me off guard. I was watching again. <laughs> All right, guys. So that's it for this week. So we're going to make multiple things on a flat surface seem, look like, have the effect of going back into space. We're truly creating a, an illusion. Okay, so the things we're going over in here are really some of the fundamentals of getting good form, getting good distance, right? C creating a world that people can buy into with paint. And that'll make whatever you're painting, it'll give the viewer a richer experience. All right, I wanna thank everybody who's been uh, subscribing and sending in things every week, questions and comments, we appreciate it. We uh, love all our likes and subscribes, thank you, thank you. And uh, the donations really do help uh, develop all the programs here. And I've been working hard behind the scenes uh, developing the content for the right content and now we're working on uh, developing the right presentation for the com content so uh, again thank you for all the donations it really helps us keep going two things going back in distance show them to me let's see what you got I really want to see them um, you know I hope enough people send them in we can do 10 minutes of student work next week challenge you for everybody to do it and send it in okay I know it can be a little tedious but if you'll sit down and do it it'll pay off in your other paintings all right Cindy anything else no I was busy watching too <laughs> all right until next week everybody bye-bye thanks for joining us bye everybody thank you